Keep a little bit of an eye on here then, and we did get a lovely little note in our ears. Matthew, I believe, is the pronunciation. That's what we're going for. So we've got Michael and Matthew here. Yeah. And are we rolling? I'm, I'm excited. It looks like we've got... The roll has happened already. I didn't catch who was going first, but the players are starting to mulligan. Oh, we got mulligan going on to Michael here, just having a little bit of a look going. All right. I think that five. Oh, I thought the two were being mulliganed. Two being kept. Five being mulliganed here. Aggressive mulligan. And is that five from Matthew or four? Six. Oh, six. No, it's, it's no more than five because there's definitely two cards. Oh, there, there is two there. Okay. There must be five from the each player. The are harder to see with the uh, amount of cards. What's your favourite sleeve colour? Are you, are you always wearing, going for the red sleeves, or is that just because it's a ruby deck? Uh, I, I did actually theme it. I'm a big fan of orange sleeves, personally. Okay. I love this is my favourite colour. I'm also colour blind, so are you really? Yeah, I have to be very careful with sleeves sometimes. I buy two packs that I think are the same colour, and it turns out they're not. I have gotten warnings in tournaments before. Wow. Yeah, it's not my fault. I don't blame me. Not Lorcana tournaments, I should add. Yeah, so <laughs> going to be Michael just getting ready with those dice. Based off the mulligan, it seems like Michael's going to be going first because uh, Mateo just waited <laughs> for Michael to mulligan. Uh, and it is going to be in the hand. There's a be prepared already, which is a little bit early. There's no one drop available, no Chernobogs or brooms. Oh. There is a Flynn Rider that can come through on turn two and a Sisu on turn three for Michael. Yeah, it's not a good turn one. We saw a shake of the head from Michael there. He knows that is not the best turn one here, which is slightly disappointing. But we go over to Matthew here, and it looks like we've got all oh, Queen's Castle Mirror Chamber going into the ink and Chernobox followers coming down here, which is a pretty tasty turn one play. Not like meatballs and parmesan cheese tasty, but still pretty tasty. And the great thing about it is with that Flynn Rider ready to come down, suddenly the Chernobogs is just going to stop that Flynn Rider gaining any lore without any other card needed on the board. So pretty impactful. Of course, Chernobogs followers is also going to be able to quest and draw a card at some point as well. It's a really, really nice one drop. Very, very efficient. It can gain one lore and then add a card back to your hand, replace itself. And of course, each time you're drawing a card, the closer you are getting to your best cards in the deck. So things like goats and all that, it's just you're improving the odds of finding the cards you're looking for the more cards you draw. Yeah, absolutely here. So Michael is eyeing up something. We see Maui getting put into the ink. Hero to all. And here comes a Flynn Rider. But like you've said, Flynn gives you free lore at the start of your turn if you have the most powerful character. Unfortunately, Flynn Rider has two strength, as does Chernobog's followers. One thing important thing to know, if Matthew is going to go for the quest and banish to draw a card, we'll have to play at least a two strength character to then stop Flynn getting free law on the following turn. If you can't, you cannot banish it and draw a card. Yep, one law for Chernobog's followers. The first law in this game. Flynn Rider with Sisu from Michael that could follow it up can be a really, really powerful combo in this mirror matchup when going first. The Sisu can be very difficult to remove. And it's not with Amethyst and Ruby. You don't have many cards like Baboom, but of course, a turn three brawl is going to be the main answer to deny that Sisu gaining law. I love the decision to leave that Chernobog followers on the board. The biggest punish here is a Madame in Fox rushing in and removing it, but that of course means the Flynn is getting bounced back to Michael's hand, so it would be a tempo loss for themselves. A lot of people would have drawn here. But I, I like the, the more greedy decision to leave that character on the board for now. No, if you don't have a replacement character, you cannot draw with Chernobyl because that would just gift Michael free law. Very true. You'd be like, oh, we've got no characters on the board. And Michael's like, sweet. That is a very I'll good I'll get point. free extra law. As I said a minute ago, if you couldn't play a two-strength character, you could not draw with Chernobyl, which actually, that gives a little bit of utility here to the Flynn Rider. It's actually come along and been kind of annoying because it meant you couldn't draw that extra card you probably wanted to and you've called it here is a sisu and you said right at the beginning of the game turn two flynn rider turn three sisu yeah that is exactly what we've seen yep but we did not see that turn one play which i'm sure michael would have loved a magic broom or a china box as the card is drawn maleficent is the card drawn there's a couple of queen's castles available there's a Madame M Snake. I'm a little bit surprised we didn't see the snake come through on turn two to just bounce that Chernobog's back into hand and then have a snake on the board instead. But the card draw does now come through. 
And that Sisu just has so much strength that the Brawl is the card that they're going to be hoping for. But it doesn't seem like oh, it is available. The Brawl to deal with the Flynn is huge. Nice. That just shuts down that Flynn Rider so significantly. Having said that, that's a whole turn you spent on turn three to deal with Flynn Rider, which was Michael's turn two play. Yeah, and Sisu, I mean, it's still got decent strength, depending on what hand size you've got, of course. You're still questing for two lore. So getting rid of Flynn Rider, good and absolutely necessary. But let's not sleep on the fact Sisu can be very, very annoying. Yeah, it's got the ability to sing friends, but also questing for two is really, really valuable. Maui could be an answer to it, but that's not going to be an option for another couple of turns at least. One thing that Michael does have to be careful of is their opponent going for a one-cost character alongside a Madam Mim Fox to rush in and remove the Sisu. That is the main answer available on turn four to deal with the Sisu. Yeah, absolutely. So we do see Michael here. It's a big decision to be made. Looks like we're inking friends. Oh, no, we're playing friends on the other side, drawing another two cards. The fact that we didn't see it sung by Sisu tells us we are going to see some questing here. Yep. So that is going to get Michael off the board. Or is it? There's another friend in hand. Ooh. So it could be an option to sing again. Generally speaking, I do like to see the Sisu questing. Because of questing for two, often you can sing with something like a goat or a rabbit, which only quest for one down the line. So it's definitely going to be an interesting decision from Michael. You don't see that often, the friends being hard cast in this position. No. And the Sisu does sing friends on the other side. So loads of cards available for Michael, but they didn't get much questing power in. In fact, they got nothing in, no law on the board as it stands. No, and just Sisu there. But that was uh, setting up your hand rather than setting up the board turn, which is not the end of the world. You're only down by two law. Your opponent very literally does not have a board. There is nothing on the board. So take that turn to build up your hand, and then from next turn, you can really start building up your board properly from there. So do not mind that at all. And for Matthew here, it is a case of what can I do? How can I answer this? Because that Sisu isn't a big problem now but will become i know my opponent's got a giant hand of cards what can i do to start building my own board in advance of because you know something good's coming or we're inking a flynn before the turn finishes it seems yeah it makes sense to ink each turn and flynn was the card decided it's a great on turn two but does kind of wear off its value a little bit down the line would have been nice to have played that flynn i'm sure instead of playing friends for three the rabbit comes through for four pretty quick turn and it's going to be back on over to Michael, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, we do see the saying what his hand's like there. It's giving us a nice little hint, which is very kind, making our life a little bit he easier. Triple B prepared oh. in the hand right now. Like, I love B prepared, but it's a seven-cost uninkable card. It is not something you want early game, especially not three of them. So, yeah not really what we're looking for we did see brawl coming down there getting rid of the rabbit but yeah michael with law on the board now tying up to two law each very slow start to the game we're 10 minutes in almost and we've got two law from each player no cards on the board other than that lone sisu so we've had a bit of a nervous opening here, you know, just getting your ink down, drawing a couple of cards, trading characters. Neither player really jumping out here or establishing a better board. Can Matthew maybe come along here and be like, it's all right, I got this. Yeah, I haven't quite had a chance to peek at Matthew's hand. There's a couple of Maui's. There's a Bee King Undisputed in there as well. Is that Maleficent? Yeah, there's a Maleficent, and I think they might be holding on to a queen's castle or two definitely getting to that kind of 11 ink mark as i mentioned often whoever be prepared first in this matchup is in a bad spot as the opponent can respond with a queen's castle but if you can get to 11 you can wipe the board and develop a queen's castle of your own michael gonna ink but not use that last two ink and it's back on over to mateo yeah and we do see maui going down into the ink here so that's five ink available. We use three of it for that Maleficent. Draw a card on play. And we also see Madame Mim, really nice here, using it as a pseudo Merlin rabbit here, just to draw a card on play and then bounce it back to hand, knowing that you can play it next turn to draw another card. Yeah, the Maleficent definitely not as much of a great bounce option as the rabbit, but it's still drawing you a card when you play it. Of course, the rabbit, when you when it leaves play draws, Maleficent doesn't, but it's still gonna be a nice option. And of course, 
One thing that is nice about Maleficent in hand compared to Rabbit is it's inkable. Yeah, so there's an argument to play it, grab your card, bounce it back, and then just ink it next turn, and over we go. Seems like another quest for Sisu here, putting Michael up to four law. So doubling up what Machu has managed to establish here. And that's the thing. It looks like Michael's got a large hand. We saw that double friend on the other side. But we need to remind you that, well, I mean, you said it, and I believe you, Joe. Free be prepared yeah. in hand for Michael. That means that a lot of that hand is just, I mean, at least for a turn or two, completely inaccessible. Yeah, it's triple be prepared. Madame Medusa, as well as an uninkable. A goat and a fox. Oh, you really don't want to ink the goat. I mean, I know I inked the goat in the last show match. I understand that. But you don't really want to if you can help it. So here comes Madame Medusa getting rid of the Madame Mim here. Yeah, and I spoke about at the start of the game how the player going first can sometimes really run away with it in terms of law, but that hasn't happened here. So it is going to be a longer game. And I think for the player going second, you're pretty happy with that. You don't want Michael to just run away with law early on. And... They're just going to be looking to control the board, but it's also really a battle of card advantage. Trying to have more cards in your hand than your opponent for a long, long game can be a great strategy. Absolutely can. Sisu goes into the ink so that we can play a Chernobog's followers, I believe. Yep. So we've got more cards on the board here, but there's still not much. You know, Maleficent and Chernobog, they're not really much of a threat. They're only questing for one each. You know, these are cards you play in your deck to draw other cards, to get you closer to the cards you really want. They're decent early game cards to help you get to the mid to late game with a better hand. They're not cards you really want down on turn six as the only ones. Oh, and here okay. comes the first mirror chamber. And actually, Michael says, hey, I've got some spare rings. The whole gang's moving in. As it stands, Michael's going to draw three cards total at the beginning of his next turn. That is nice. Yeah, it's a really interesting moment. Perhaps Michael making the read that there's no Maui available, but I think it's a trap because there's a couple of Mauis, there are. and this Queen's Castle can be removed before it gains a single law. Usually in these mirror matchups, you see the Queen's Castle coming through on turn four or much later, but here it comes through on around turn seven. Chernobog is going to quest and draw. And we can just uh, uh, challenge here with Maleficent and Maui, who's got Rush, of course. It it's Maui time! And that is exactly what we see. Maleficent and Maui teaming up to destroy the castle here. And that means that, Michael, it's not just the law. Remember, there were two characters yeah. in the castle, so it was going to be two law and two cards. There was absolutely no way Matthew was going to allow that Queen's Castle to remain if he had any say in this whatsoever. Six ink was spent on the Queen's Castle, four for playing it, and then two to move characters in, and it did absolutely nothing. Yeah, and you played five ink for Maui, and now you've got a big six strength, five willpower body on the board. I don't mind that. So we've got those three B prepared, friends on the other side, and a Madame Mim Fox. That is it. Do we, I mean, it's not even really worth trying to be prepared here, honestly. Yeah, the big problem is if you go be prepared, the opponent can often respond with a Queen's Castle. And I think they've held on to at least one Queen's Castle, maybe two, for that exact reason. And yeah. I have to say, like, the three be prepared in hand this early is really unlucky from Michael. It's not what you're looking for. Medusa going to sing Friends. Could have been with Sisu. Of course, Sisu costs three, but it does quest for two. Medusa only quests for one. Yeah, absolutely. We do see Michael here. He's got the Sisu, he's got the Madame Medusa. You are now, I believe, did he ink this turn? Not sure. I don't think he's inked this turn. Sisu quests up to nine now, so Michael is definitely getting there. And honestly, if I'm Michael, I like my board. I don't want to be prepared here. I quite like having my Sisu yeah. questing for two every turn. I've got my Madame Medusa's four strength, also can quest only for one, but still. Whereas on Machu's side of the board, you've got Maui that doesn't quest, and Maleficent, which, you know, the best thing about it is probably the draw. So I'm ahead by six law. I've got the better board. I mean, Michael's hand is not playing along nicely this game, no. and yet he's ahead by six law, and it's going... Okay, he doesn't look chuffed with his hand, and I wouldn't be in his position either, but it's kind of working. Yeah, the hand is those three B-prepareds, 
There's a couple of foxes in there as well as one other card. But there's no rabbits, which would be the main bounce target. I think it's a Chernobog followers. It is. So two foxes, a Chernobog followers, and that triple B prepared, which is just stuck in Michael's hand as an uninkable card. Wouldn't mind a hidden ink caster right now. Because it's an <laughs> emerald card. So I was playing in our show match. Yeah. But uh, that is the problem with B prepared. As strong as it is, it is uninkable, and it can just end up in situations like this where you have a bunch of uninkable cards, which you don't want to play. No, and that's the thing. High-cost uninkables are the riskiest cards in the whole of Lorcana because yeah. you can't ink them, you can't play them early. They will just sit in your hand, turn after turn, giving you nothing. And if you draw them after the mulligan, there's nothing that can be done. They are just sitting there. So it looks like we're going to pay not very much ink here for that Chernobox followers that you spied a second ago. Yeah, two foxes still in Michael's hand. Could be an interesting option to maybe bounce back the Madame Medusa into hand to replay her later on. Yeah, get rid of a character that's causing you problems right now. It looks like that was the turn. We're over to Matthew here, who is eyeing up something to go into the ink. It looks like we are going to Maui, taking out that Madame oh, Medusa, wow. and double B King Undisputed, which will take out the other two characters. Who needs B prepared yeah. when you can get rid of all of your opponent's characters while keeping all your own? You, you ripped the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say the exact same thing. It's a B prepared, but it allows you to keep your characters on the board. So it's much better than B prepared in this situation. And Michael now with that hand with triple B prepared and triple Fox as well. It's oh. So yeah, you can't even do anything with that. You need to have a character on the board. If you don't have a character on the board, you play Fox and it just immediately gets banished. You literally cannot, well, you can play it into the discard pile. That's the best you can do. So is, is, that, is that literally his entire hand? No yes. other cards? Yes. Oh, triple mate. Triple prepared, triple Fox. I mean, we've been talking about Michael's hand being pretty poor for most of this game, but I think it might have just leveled up. It's yeah. shifted <laughs> into an even worse hand. Yeah, and this is the situation. Michael's probably going to be forced to be prepared. And on the other side, there's a rabbit, there's a queen's castle. So might even be double queen's castle available. I would definitely double queen's castle after a B prepared here. I think there's certainly an argument to ink one of the foxes just to give yourself extra ink available. There we go. And oh, B prepared. You are getting value out of it. You are slowing down your opponent. But yeah, we do see the B prepared. Away goes Maui, away goes Maleficent. First B prepared on the stream today, and Baker's not oh, even here. We do see the rabbit from Mateo, and that is going to cost four. Four more available. It's going to be the Queen's Castle. Of course it is. This is what tends to happen in these Ruby Amethyst Mirrors. Whoever B prepares first then allows the opponent to reset the board in a similar way to how the player going first in a game of Lorcana gets a bit of an edge. It's kind of a similar thing. The, re the Be Prepared resets the board, and then your opponent gets to develop the board first, which can put them in a really good spot. But M Michael's still ahead in law. Flynn Ryder found that is going to allow them to fox. And could we see the, f the Flynn inked and the double fox to clean up the Queen's Castle? <laughs> I love that play. Fox has rush and has four strength. So you play the Flynn, play a fox to bounce the Flynn to deal four to the Queen's Castle, and then play another fox to bounce the first fox with rush to deal another. Another four. It's a lot of effort, but it got rid of the castle. Yep, and we see a fox of Mateo's own, and it's going to put that rabbit back into the hand, allowing them to draw a card. We appear to have reached the fox portion yes. of our feature matchup here. But let's just talk about the card disparity in hand. Michael has double B prepared and fox in hand. And on the other side, there is just an abundance of cards, and a rabbit entering the board adds another one into the hand. And it looks like we're eyeing up one more card here. Was that our last turn of box followers? It is. Just get a body on the board, and then next turn. Look, if you pay one ink to quest for one and draw a card, that is a very, very good trade-off. Okay, off the top, it's a Maui that Michael finds. 
Would you say it's Maui time? I would say it's probably be prepared time. It is most it certainly out. be prepared time. And this is something you can do. If you can chain be prepared, you can whittle down your opponent's resources. You play the first one and they go, that's fine. I'll play all these. The problem is, look at Matthew's hand. Yeah. I don't think the be prepared twice in a row to whittle down your opponent's resources is going to work. If you can play one and they empty out their hand and then you play a second, you can often win the game with that play. Matthew's hand is too good. We see a mirror's... Uh, mirror chamber coming down and another character there as well go into the castle as well I would not take a go into a castle that is how you make a mess <laughs> but it's also how you get an extra card at the beginning of your town now it's Maui time in the <laughs> castle but six, six strength on Maui there's the okay. fox Mateo knew it was coming before it even happened so is... Maui back into Michael's hand saving it for a rainy day I will say, Michael has done a fantastic job here of countering those castles. Yep. The second, actually both players, to be fair, have done a fantastic job of countering those castles. Castle comes down, and it does not last. Yep, Goat is going to sing Friends on the other side. Goat only questing for one, so a really great card to be singing with. If you sing with something like a Sisu, you're missing out on two lore. With a Goat, you're just missing out on one, so it's a very efficient singer. Yeah, I like that. It's always nice to get some nice, efficient use of your cards. Here comes a Madame Mim Snake to pick the goat up and then put the goat back down. And would you believe it? That's two extra lore for Matthew here. The goat really is a phenomenal card. It's an inkable, yep. and when you play it, you draw, you get a lore. And when, you, when it leaves play, however that happens, you gain a lore. Even if you don't bounce it and your opponent gets rid of it straight away, you still gain two lore. Michael's played to be prepared, still has that third available in hand. There's a Sisu, there is a Goat, and that Maui, which was bounced back earlier on as well. Not too shabby. But on the other side, I think Mateo with an abundance of cards available currently, just looking through the discard pile, definitely a good thing to do, just check what cards you've played yourself. You, of course, you can't look through the ink well, so that's a real part of the skill in law kind of trying to remember exactly which cards have been inked. That's something I am really not very good at, Ross. No, someone I got in trouble for at a pretty casual tournament we were at, <laughs> when I tried showing you that all six of my ink were bodyguard. Yeah. yeah, we were playing a game, I showed you all six of my ink were bodyguard, and you reminded me that I was very much not allowed to do that. I didn't call the judge on you, at least. That would have been very rude. Yeah, at the only time I've done, I'm sorry, I had six bodyguards <laughs> out of six ink. That was relevant. What also is relevant is how much ink these players have got. They have both got a lot of options, and that means the difference comes down to your hand. We're similar on ink, we're similar on law. It is a hand right now which is making a difference, and Matthew seems to have the better hand. Here comes Flynn Rider with Maui. That is a wonderful combination, because Michael is going to need something more powerful than a Maui or to remove the Flynn in Ryder, or Matthew gets free law for nothing. Yep, Brawl goes into the inkwell. Michael's going to draw. Currently, Michael at 10 law. Mateo at 7. Magic Broom for 1. That's a lot of ink coming down for a Maui of their own, but that's not going to actually get rid of Flynn Rider. It will, however, match up Maui and stop Flynn Rider getting that extra law. Michael just drawing a really interesting card, a two-cost Pegasus, which is a 3-1 that quests for one with evasive. Maybe a tech more for the Diablo matchup rather than this particular one. So it might just be a nice card to ink, but with two ink available could help protect the Maui from something like a Bee King Undisputed. Yeah, which would help very nicely indeed. It's one of the things we see. If you think your opponent is playing Lady Tremaine or Bee King Undisputed, you know that leaving one character out means they will go down. So you put a second character just to give a little bit of protection, an option, if you will. This, however, is Madame Medusa. You get the choice, except it's not a choice. Maui's out of range. You get Pegasus. And I was trying to eye up what that enchanted card is, and I finally worked out it's Lady Tremaine. Main. Not something you see every day in these Ruby Amethyst decks. Definitely a card I'm a big fan of. I mean, even just including one copy, you can bounce it back with the Madden Mims and utilize it multiple times. Could be a really big surprise factor in this tournament. Of course, day one is closed deck lists. Day two, it would be open deck lists. But even then, it's still a great card, which can quest for two. 
Yeah, it absolutely can. It's a very nice car that it can get rid, it can quest. It's nice. What also is nice, the GOAT gets a law when it comes into play, and it's going to get a law when it leaves play as well. And remember, Michael is still four law ahead here. I know for a lot of the game, Michael's not had much of a board. The hand has been pretty terrible for pretty much the whole game. But Michael has made the most of it and is sitting now on 11 law, very much in the driver's seat. Also, must be borne in mind, we are more than halfway through through our time here. We yep. have 20 minutes remaining. If it ends as a 1-0, it ends as a 1-0. One player gets three points, the other player gets zero. Yep. There's no advantage. There's no winning 1-0 here. You want that bonus point, you've got to win both games in the proper manner. Yeah, absolutely. And we do see Lady Tremaine maybe being considered. There it is, the Enchanted Tremaine. So Michael has the choice of banishing one of their own characters. You go for Besides good. for the GOAT. I think that's the right choice here. You get a law for doing so, and also Flynn Rider. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Flynn Rider being on the board there is going to be the main decision there. But the Pan Shadow Finder comes through. Ooh. The three cost evasive with Rush. Nothing to challenge, though. Well, here we get a finally rabbit. Finally a rabbit from Michael. They've been looking for that rabbit for an awfully long time, and they finally got one. We still have a fox in hand. Oh, Maui takes out the, uh, excuse me, the Madame Medusa. The hand is a Brawl and a Sisu. Oh, I no. think that's it. There might be one other card hidden. Looks like a Chernobog's followers. I mean, if you've got a Brawl, am I wrong in thinking maybe just get rid of Flynn Rider? It could be wise. That's certainly what I would be thinking about doing right now, because that Flynn Rider can get awfully annoying if you let it sit there. There is a decision being made here by Michael. What's he thinking? He's thinking about playing something that's a free cost. Is it a brawl? It is, and it is on the Flynn Rider. That is exactly what I would have done. It's, it's really annoying when you've got to continually go through the game going, make sure I've not got... Like, you don't even have to have the highest character. Yeah. Just match your opponent's highest. It's annoying to keep doing it all game, though. We're going to see the pan challenge the Maui, so both go into the discard. Maui and Tremaine still on the board. Of course, Tremaine can quest for two. Maui unable to quest at all, but it can sing songs. Maui does love a good sing song. Yeah, Maui's a bit partial to a sing song. Medusa in the hand, and it's going to come down onto the board. Probably the rabbit was an option, denying the bounce potential, but the Chernobog followers can draw a card of its own, and so that is the decision. Lady Tremaine questing for two. In comes another Flynn Rider. You think you've gotten rid of him. Well, guess what? There's another where that came from. Yeah, and we've got a really... This is what we've been looking for all game. One of the players to go, right, I've got enough ink, I've got enough cards, let's really build this board. Now we've got your Madame Medusa, your Madame Mim Fox, your Maui, your Flynn Rider, all sitting there on the board to Michael's Rabbit. And Matthew still behind on law, but only by two this game could be about to flip. Magic Broom played. Magic Broom is banished to draw. Four ink available now for Michael. Hasn't yet inked this turn. So that is still going to be an option for them. Questing with the rabbit. Could we see any kind of bounce potential here? Not sure what. Is it only one card left in hand? It is one in hand, and I'm not quite sure what it is. Did we ever see the third be prepared? Yeah, I do believe the third be prepared has already come through. I also don't remember when it was, but it's not in the hand, so it must okay. have. <laughs> it's been a long game, Ross. It has been a very long game. But we are going to game number two. And the I'm player going second takes it. Michael just couldn't get going. That triple B prepared was a complete disaster. And unfortunately, just having your hand clogged up that much from that early in the game can lead to those kind of games. So Matthew goes and wins game one. But here's the thing. This is not a best of three. This is a two-game format. Winning 1-0 gets you three points. Each player winning one game gets you three points. Winning two games gets you seven. So we got one player here, Michael, who is just trying to cling on and get three points out of nothing. Whereas Matthew's thinking, well, that last game got me three points. If I win this game, it gets me four points, seven in total. So you are at that stage now where I think we're going to see some fast play. In a yeah. best of three format, if you win game one, game two doesn't finish, oh no. Yeah. That's not where 
where we are here, it is in both players' best interest that this game finishes. So, which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, love it. It's one of it's my favourite thing about the two-game format. Doesn't matter how much time's left. Every game, both players are incentivized to try and win. Even if there's five minutes remaining, there is a l huge amount to gain. You know, there's going to be. I mean, imagine the amount of people at the end of today, at the end of nine rounds. Imagine how pe how many people are going to be within four points of top 64. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be loads. Yeah, and we are seeing the the Mulligans at this moment in time. Didn't catch what's been mulliganed exactly, but uh, definitely looking to wrap this game up as quickly as possible, both players. It's within their interest to finish it. There's no reason to play in a, in a way which means that the game does not resolve. You may as well just let the game finish either way. Looking for that Flynn Rider on two, CC on three. Flynn Rider into the inkwell, but again, no one cost character this time. Oh, Michael didn't have it last game, but does this game? Matthew had it last game, but doesn't this game? Are we seeing the mirror being flipped a little bit yeah. here? We haven't even seen the mirror chamber come down yet. Is that a second Flynn it's, Rider uh, getting in? And a third one coming down. Matthew apparently starts with free Flynn Rider. Is there an argument, since there's not much time left, try and get all three Flynn Rider down and have a turn where you get nine law. I wouldn't say no to that. It sounds <laughs> ambitious, though. It it's sounds ambitious. It's incredibly ambitious, but you would love to see it. Uh, not maybe the most sensible play. So now Michael is deciding. It looks like we are going to quest with China Box followers. Do you want to keep it on the board? I know you have to keep it on the board. It's a mirror image of last game. Okay, now Pegasus is down. You don't need to keep yeah. it on the board. Yeah, so Pegasus has evasive. Three strength, one willpower. It can and quest for one. There isn't going to be any shift Pegasus options in this deck. I think the shift Pegasus, the only one available is in Emerald. Yep. So that's not going to be a shift target. Probably more aimed at the Diablo matchup, as it's a good way to deal with Diablo. But interestingly, there is a Peter Pan Shadow Finder as an evasive option as well for Mateo. So both players with an unorthodox evasive card as the mirror chamber into the inkwell. There is the Madam Mim. It's not the Sisu opener that you want to see if you're playing Ruby Amethyst. Michael is doing pretty well to apply pressure despite going second here with a very wide board. The evasive quest is the first law on the board. Are we going to see the Chernobog's followers quest? I, I mean, I would at this point, definitely. Worst case scenario, Madam Mim takes it out, but you still get your law. You could even just quest and then draw a card. If you're choosing not to here, Rabbit comes down and that will draw a card. And you see the pace of play here, very different to yeah. in game one. We see Madam Mim questing to go and get an extra law. We see an ink coming down, and then it looks like we are passing over to Michael here. Just got friends on the other side, singing it with Maleficent, getting an extra couple of cards. Yeah, really, really efficient play with the Maleficent. It drew a card when it played, and it's able to sing friends. The Chernobog followers quests as well for one, and is banished to draw a card. There's a lot of uninkable ruby cards. I can see two B prepared in there again for Michael. A little oh, bit of deja vu. No. This time, though, they've got a lot more cards available in hand. Thanks to that friends on the other side of the Chernobog's drawing. And Maleficent drew as well when it came in. We've seen a bunch more cards. Madam Mim Fox will bounce on Maleficent. You could potentially go after... You could just trade the, the Madam Mim if you want here. Trade yours yep. for your opponents. We quest with Pegasus. We play Chernobog's followers. Yeah, the broom got inked and the Chernobog's played. And the Foxes do trade as well. And it's going to be back on over to Mateo who is going to draw a brawl. We do see the rabbit here questing. We see Madam Mim bouncing the rabbit. That'll draw a card. That is very, very nice here. And we see Brawl getting inked so that we can play a Maleficent to draw a card. And we're still not seeing much lore here. We've seen a lot of draw power from both players, building up their hand nicely, but not much lore coming down yet. Yep, Chernobog's questing for one, card drawn. So Michael currently edging ahead at that four ink, four law mark. Pegasus is going to put them up to five. Despite going second, the GOAT puts them up to six. They're starting to make a very, very quick start, despite being the player going second, which is not something you see that often. Could we see both the players going second being victorious in this matchup? Could be fun. Yeah, the rabbit enters the board. 
card drawn. One ink still available. Friends is going to be sung for another two cards in hand. Haven't yet inked this turn, if I'm not mistaken, but I can't see any two-cost characters to make use of that last two ink remaining. So Brawl into the inkwell. And the Madam Mim is going to quest as well. Very fast pace. So we do see Michael here taking the turns, drawn for turn. We've got Pegasus down. We've got Goats down. We've got Friends on the other side. Oh, lots it of unink. Be prepared again. How does that happen? Two games in a row. And you've also got your Madame Medusa there, which is an uninkable. There's a lot of uninkable cards in that hand. Four out of seven, if I'm reading correctly. So you can ink Maleficent. You can ink Friends on the other side. And what was the last card on the left there? Didn't quite catch it. Yeah, I'm not certain either. It might be a goat. I'm not certain. Don't quote me on that. Looks like it might be a goat. I mean, goat's a pretty good card. The problem is you've only got four law, and once again, we see both players struggling to establish much of a big board presence. That is, that was a real turning point in the last game where Machi got enough ink down that they could go, right, here are all of my characters. What can you do? And that's when we saw the concession. So we see Pegasus questing. We see goat questing. Yeah. Michael is up to eight ink here, but we saw Michael jumping ahead in the last game and it didn't work out at the end. It was really interesting to see Michael just pay three to sing, fre uh, to play friends, not sing it. Could have sung it with Go, but really valuing that one law. Clearly just trying to wrap this game up as quickly as possible, saying, I'd rather spend three ink and gain one law than spend no ink and gain no law. <laughs> I like it. There goes the Madam Mim Fox, which is trading into the Merlin Goat. We see some questing. We see a fox coming down, bouncing the rabbit. That'll get an extra card again. If you can get this bounce package working, draw into the right cards at the right time, and just keep bouncing that rabbit or that goat back to hand, back onto the board. It is so powerful. Rabbit hits the board, draws another card. Is that like five cards from that rabbit now or something? Yeah, it's a lot. The Pegasus and everything else is going to be ready for Michael. They do have that triple B prepared, which is burning a bit of a hole in, in their pocket. It's going to have to come through at some point. Would you be prepared this board? It's tempting. But it's it, not great, is it? It's tempting. And the most tempting thing for me is my opponent keeps bouncing that rabbit. Yeah. And I'm worried that they're going to keep bouncing it. Like, there's actually a fox in hand for Machi right now. There's going to be another two cards. Yeah. Honestly, you can get rid of the rabbit while also getting rid of another couple of characters and making it awkward to play something like a Madam Mim Fox next turn because there's no character to bump. It's not happening now, of course, but it's, there was an argument for it this turn. Yeah. I'm saying it had to be done. Yeah. Medusa does clean up that rabbit, Ross, just as you suggested, not wanting that rabbit to be bounced back nice. many more times. Similar situation where the card advantage in terms of hand size is very much in Mathero's favor as the fox removes the Maleficent. Two yep. damage counters onto the fox now, but Maleficent into the discard. Michael is only nine lore away, and when you've got access to goats, that can get very, very dangerous if you let them get to that 15, 16 mark. Yeah, that's when goats can really drag you over the finish line here. So could Super Goof, but yes. unfortunately not in this game. I have to say, the Pegasus did a lot of work. Medusa eventually removing it from the board, but that evasive ability was really impressive. Medusa's going to quest up to 12. Is it time for the Be Prepared? Seven ink available. Again, I kind of think it is. Your opponent's got a better board than you right now. But no, the goat comes through instead. Don't mind this. Three we... ink available. Do we have the fox? It certainly does. Michael okay. is getting really close to that 20 mark. With fox and goat, I completely understand why you don't be prepared, because getting that law is too good. You don't have enough ink, I believe, to replay the goat immediately, but the goat can come down next turn. Yeah. And this seems like it might end up working out pretty nicely in the end. Michael putting himself in a great, great position here. Six law away from winning the game. B King undisputed the card found off the top. It is going to be Fox removing Medusa. At this moment, every law has to be gotten rid of. And that B King being sung by Medusa removes the Fox. And that is just an eye alone. The Queen's Castle is a big moment because that is the best way to play around a potential B prepared. The location will not be removed by a B prepared. 
And there's a goat coming down as well, so be prepared would give Matthew one law. I still think you probably have to be prepared. If not this turn, then soon, because your opponent is building yeah. up a decent board. They've got a bunch of cards in hand, and crucially, you're on 14 law. Now, the problem is you don't really have enough ink to be prepared and play a bunch of characters as well. That's what you really need to try yeah. and do here. But I just worry that if you try building up your board, what if your opponent goes quest, 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 be prepared? So be here prepared we comes go. Through. Now, there is in hand a magic broom and double goat as the inkable options. The magic broom would be great to develop, but you're never inking a goat, are you, when you're at 14? Two oh, goats no. in hand for Michael. But look at that. A goat on the other side as well in a very tight game. And it's the fox to bounce it back for even more law gain. And moves into the Queen's Castle as well. And this is where it gets awkward. Michael really wants to get over the finish line, but Matthew is so close. You're now thinking, well, hang on a second. Now I need to probably take care of that castle as well. But what I really want to do is set up and get law. And yeah, that's a basic tenant of Lorcana. Are you going to try and go after your opponent's characters and locations? Or are you just going to quest? Well, Disney Lorcana says, yeah, that's the whole point. Make that choice. That's where the challenge comes in. Maui was drawn by Michael, which is an interesting option. Imagine that magic broom was on the board for Michael. If they inked a goat the previous turn, they could have gone for the magic broom alongside the be prepared because they would have had eight ink. And then the Maui plus the broom could challenge the Queen's Castle removing. Of course, it would have been crazy to ink a goat, but there was definitely an argument to do so in that position. But of course, those goats are going to be so valuable for Michael. So it was a really tricky decision. And I'm still not certain which was the right call, but we're going to find out soon enough. And right now, Matthew's basically got four law on the board for next turn, because we know we got the goat in hand. We just bounced it back. So that's going to be four law going up to 17 pretty easily. Michael just needs six to crawl over the line. Salvage three points. We are putting a broom into the ink. Oh, well, hello. Double goat. And wait, that is no win. That's not 20. I was going to say. That was a misclick. Yeah, that's up to 16. That's basically two law for Michael here. Yeah. Because the goat, when they go away, then that's an extra two law. You need to find a way to get two more law. That's all you really need. But Magic goes up to 15 with the Queen's Castle. There's at least one goat in hand. There is a fox that can quest. Speaking of which. Yeah. And now we're in a position where both players are on 16. We are. Be prepared comes through. Oh. Doesn't remove the castle, but the double goat. You had to do that. more law. You had to get rid of the goat before they quest it, because if they quest, then they go away and the game is lost. So you had to do that right then. You had to get rid of double goat, even though you put your opponent on 18, because your theory is you'll get there faster. But there's only two law available. Does Matthew have goat and bounce option? Michael doesn't, and neither does their opponent. But you know what they do have? Goat and something else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll see. There it is, double goat. Double goat. Who needs a bounce when you just have two goats? <laughs> you don't need a bounce when you've just got two goats, and that is going to be the victory. Wow, what?